Hey guys, Tori here from Overlook Horizon. Uh, this is Overlook Horizon 8. We are at the launch site here today. Uh, got set up and ready to go. And we're just about to get uh, up and running here. It's a little bit, I'm staring like right directly in the sun, but I can't put my sunglasses on because they're polarized and then I can't see the screen. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, so we're here today all set up ready to go for hopefully for a successful launch uh, for Overlook Horizon 8 today Today's flights nickname rectify uh, So if you followed the last flight that we had uh, about two weeks ago or so on the 17th of July um, About an hour into the flight we started experiencing some power issues where the, the onboard computer would reset and recycle and reboot um, did it once an hour in and then I did it a couple more times sporadically but then about an hour and 45 minutes into the flight um, then it just it continuously did it over and over again and it got into a death spiral and couldn't couldn't get itself out of there so so today we're doing a couple things uh, making a couple changes to the electronics uh, trying to resolve that issue and prevent that from happening um, so hopefully we can have a good flight today and get the thing up and running and uh, broadcasting throughout the entire flight today. So, uh, so what's in store for today? Well, it's a little bit different than it usually is today because today I'm by myself. Uh, so it's just me today, uh, which means, unfortunately, the live broadcast is not going to be much of a show. I mean, I'm going to try to do as much as I can. I'll try to answer as many questions that come up. Um, uh, you know when I get breaks in the in the uh, setup process, uh, but it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be difficult today. So you see the uh, the the timer up in the corner here. Uh, we got about 56 minutes to launch. Um, I'm really hoping we can launch on time. Um, it's gonna be tough by myself because um, trying to get the particularly trying to get the balloon sealed, um, and also trying to make sure I follow our checklist procedures. I mean I gotta stop and look at it every single time, making sure I don't miss a step. So. Uh, so I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be hustling today, trying to trying to get it all myself. It's it's the middle of the day on uh, what day are we on Tuesday? So uh, so the rest of the launch team is uh, working and uh, you know can't make it today. But I wanted to make sure that we went today at this particular time because the the flight path is so interesting for this time. And we'll take a look at it here real quick. Um, let me flip this over here to the flight path. So this is today's flight prediction. Uh, this is from the um, this is from the midnight prediction. There was another prediction that uh, that we ran at 6 a.m., um, which didn't deviate too much from this here. So um, so this is uh, this should be about the flight path that we expect today. So um, if you can see on the screen there the red dot that's uh, just north of Canandaigua Lake there. That's where we are right now. That's our launch site. So we're going to do this kind of squirrely, you know loop around here then it's going to head all the way back to the west um, towards rochester does another quick uh, it's going to break out in the west and then it does a little loop parachutes back down we should be landing somewhere in the bloomfield victor farmington um, you know west side of canandaigua area so so that's kind of the flight path that we're looking at today uh, this is just one prediction you know obviously uh, the chances of it following this exactly are pretty low uh, but the uh the important thing is that we look at is going to be the landing zone. So this is our predicted landing zone. We predict it could land anywhere in this area here. Um, so obviously the red being the more concentrated area where we think it will land. Uh, yellow is a little less and then green is kind of the outskirts of that. Um, it's not a foolproof process there. You know, we've had flights that uh, that land in the green. Uh, we've had flights that land outside of this zone completely. Uh, but it's usually pretty close to this this landing zone here. Um, so that's what we're expecting today. It is a beautiful calm day. Uh, there are, it's almost perfectly still out here. There are no winds, which is awesome for launching by yourself. Um, so, um, so we've got a, let's see, let's take a look at what we got here. See if uh, you can, well, you can see the sky a little bit uh, over my shoulder here. Uh, a little bit of haze in the, uh, in the sky, but uh, really there's not a cloud in the sky here. So. We will, oh, that's not what I wanted. Launching now. No, we're not launching now. I wanted to go to this one. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, 
So here's our two cameras that we have for today. This is probably what I'm gonna leave it at. Usually I don't do this split screen uh, for most of the broadcast, but I think I'm gonna try to do this today um, so that we can, uh, uh, so you can get a different angle. Um, I don't know, it might drive you crazy though because uh, this, the stream that I'm on is pretty up to date, pretty snappy. Uh, this other stream here is uh, a wireless camera and it's delayed a little bit. So if you see me on this camera, and I move, then about two or three seconds later, you're gonna see me move on this camera. Um, so maybe it'll drive you crazy, I don't know. Send, put it in the comments there, let me know if it drives you crazy and I'll switch it back to just the single camera. Um, but I figure I'd give you a, a different angle so you can see uh, see what's happening uh, while we're getting things set up and ready. Um, so on the uh, on the YouTube broadcast, uh, uh, somebody commented, but uh, it, it's, it's not in English and unfortunately I have no idea what you said. <laughs> Um, but uh, if you can Google Translate that for me, uh, I can certainly uh, be happy to respond to your questions. Uh, uh, you know, the best I can here. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, I got to get going, so I'd Google Translate that myself. But uh, I got to, I got to get things up and running. So um, I can certainly respond after the broadcast as well, too. But anyway, send me your questions, uh, Randy. Good morning and good luck. Thanks, Randy. Appreciate it. Uh, it's going to be a, going to be a tough one today just because I'm by myself and trying to get everything up and running but hopefully things go smooth uh, so we're, we're really hoping for a on-time launch and smooth broadcast smooth flight throughout the whole thing so we will see how that goes uh, not much has changed from the payload standpoint we're still running three cameras uh, two side cameras one balloon facing camera uh, balloon facing camera we kind of got the balloon burst on the last one but it was like half a second too late because of those power cycle issues and the main computer happens to control the balloon camera as well it doesn't control the side camera so the side cameras weren't affected by that but the computer controls the the balloon camera so every time it recycled the balloon camera would shut off and turn back on again so we kind of got the balloon burst on video last time but it wasn't good enough i want i want better i want a, I want a smooth video that we can see clearly so that's what we're hoping for today so two side cameras one upward facing camera um we'll see uh see what we can get there for video footage jason wish i knew you were flying solo today i would have gladly helped out good luck today oh thanks jason appreciate it um that, that wasn't the plan uh wasn't planning on launching solo today we were actually uh until about 8 p.m last night this was going to be a 5 30 p.m launch time um, but the last prediction that uh, from 6 p.m last night started pushing the the launch site way out to the east and it was getting close to montezuma swamp which is a no-go we don't want to land in the montezuma swamp um and so then i started running some predictions and that flight path started started uh, uh the 6 p.m uh, prediction last night had the landing and the launch almost in the exact same spot and one thing that i really really want to accomplish is to try to get a really short recovery distance. I don't know, it's just fascinating to me. I'd love to, I'd love to, I love the idea of just launching right here, staying here, watching the balloon, taking my time packing up, and then just have a nice short drive for recovery. Um, so our predictions, um, between 6 p.m. last night and midnight, uh, they were about, we were like three miles from the launch site, and then it got to be about five miles from the launch site. And then today, this morning, it's more like seven miles from the launch site, something like that. So we, we got good chance, uh, a good chance of beating our personal record of um, shortest recovery distance. The shortest recovery we had was on Overlook Horizon 2. It was 17.6 miles. So if we can get anything less than 17.6 miles, then we've set a new record today for shortest downrange recovery for ourselves. So. Uh, so I'd love to see that in the single digits. Um, you know, if we can get anything less than 10, I think that would be just fantastic. So that's what we're going to shoot for today. But uh, all right, so I see uh, we just crossed the T-minus 50 minute mark here. Uh, I'm going to get started. Uh, I want to get right into the balloon filling because I know there's going to be delays because I'm by myself. So um, I'm going to try real hard to uh, make sure. That's a very different prediction. Most lights go east. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting that it, the landing is actually going to be to the west of our launch site so that's kind of cool i'm very interested that's one of the reasons why i wanted to launch today during this time because uh, i love interesting flight patterns like this you launch a balloon and it goes goes to the east it's kind of like oh yeah that makes sense but you launch a balloon and it does this crazy swirl and then it heads back to the west and then you know that to me that's very interesting so 
Um, so anyways, good luck. Thank you very much. So, um, all right. So I'm going to get started filling the balloon up. I'm going to show you our intro video. So uh, if you've seen it already, because uh, we did publish it on YouTube, uh, apologies if you saw it already. But uh, I'm going to show you the intro video. shows you uh, what we got in store for today and what the plan is. Um, tells you a little bit about the changes we've made for, uh, for today's flight. Yikes. How are you going to fill the balloon solo? Uh, I've done it once before, but uh, it's not easy. Uh, luckily, very calm winds today. So uh, we'll see how it goes. I don't know. So anyways, we're gonna we're gonna do our best. So let me show you the intro video. I'm gonna get set up, start filling the balloon, and uh, we'll uh, we'll st uh, we'll answer that question uh, very shortly. How are you gonna fill the balloon by yourself? We're gonna answer that very shortly here. So take a look at the intro video here, and uh, when you come back, hopefully I've, I'll be started on filling the balloon. So see you in a few minutes here. It's a quick turnaround, but we're going again. Overlook Horizon 8 is launching today. <laughs> guys, Tori here from Overlook Horizon. It's flight day for our fourth flight of 2017. Overlook Horizon 8, nicknamed Rectify. The name Rectify for this flight represents today's primary objective, which is to resolve the radio transmission issues that we experienced on Flight 7. Our last flight seemed to launch perfectly and proceeded for an entire hour without any issues. However, less than halfway into our flight, we began experiencing a power cycle issue that caused our main computer to continuously reboot throughout the remainder of the flight. and we were unable to receive positioning reports. We're not exactly sure of the cause of this, but we've got some pretty good theories on what may have contributed to this, which we'll be testing on today's flight. Our computer restarts occurred consistently at the moment the radio transmission started. The radio transmitter is the most power hungry device on our flight computer. So we believe our board was suffering from a brief voltage drop that occurred the moment the transmitter started broadcasting and using more power from the batteries. We've had a tough time replicating this on the ground though, as the batteries perform perfectly at ground level. So what changes during flight? Well, mainly the temperature. Batteries in general are notorious for having reduced performance in cold temperatures. One of the best ways to avoid this issue is to use a set of lithium batteries to power the payload, which perform well in cold temperatures down to negative 40 degrees. These are great and definitely where we recommend starting if you're launching your own flight. Side note, you'll notice I didn't mention whether it was negative 40 degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit. And that's because negative 40 degrees is the magic point where both Celsius and Fahrenheit scales meet to represent the same value. Anyways, this year we decided to switch to high performance lithium ion ion batteries, mainly due to their ability to recharge after the flight so we can launch and test all with the same batteries without having to constantly buy new batteries. These batteries only operate down to negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 20 degrees Celsius, but it's not that concerning for us. We've measured temperatures as low as negative 76 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 60 degrees Celsius during our flights but our payload is pretty well insulated. We rarely even drop below freezing during the flight on the inside of the payload package. On Overlook Horizon 7 though, we reached below freezing temperatures much sooner than we had in the past. This was partly due to one of the cameras not powering on for launch. We still got great footage on the last flight, but the cameras provide valuable heating inside the payload during the flight as one of the biggest heat sources. One of the first things we wanna to change today is to make sure that all cameras are running at launch time. The other big change for this flight is that we're adding some additional capacitors to our power rail on the circuit board. Capacitors store energy in an electric field and charge up within a second or two after receiving power. They come in handy particularly during voltage drop events. If the battery needs a moment to catch up to the increased load, the capacitor can fill in for a brief moment to smooth out the power supply and keep things running. We're talking microseconds here. We hope the capacitors will be able to bridge the gap that occurs during the radio transmissions to keep the board running continuously throughout the flight. Lastly, today's flight will be using another 1200 gram balloon with a much smaller 600 gram backup balloon. We should be heading over 100,000 feet again on this flight if all goes well. We're expecting a flight time of about 2 hours and 45 minutes and today's flight is expected to land just 5 miles downrange of our launch site. So we're hoping to set a new personal record for our shortest downrange recovery today. Previously, our shortest downrange recovery was 17.6 miles on Overlook Horizon 2. So that's what's happening today. We've got just one more flight planned after today for 2017, which will occur in the afternoon on Monday, August 21st during the total solar eclipse in North America. So make sure you're following us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date on those flights. Also, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our live broadcasts, our in-flight videos, or the educational series videos we'll have in between flights. So what do you guys think about today's flight? Do you think our electrical fixes will rectify our broadcast issues, or 
Do you think this flight will be lost to the Animoi? Those are the Greek wind gods. It'll be a nail biter, so follow along today to find out and let us know what you think will go down in the comment section down below. I'll try to answer as much as I can during the live broadcast today, but this midday launch time in the middle of the week means I'm launching solo today. I've only ever done that once before, so wish me luck. Now, let's head back to the launch site, hopefully to see a successful launch today for Overlook Horizon 8 Rectify. <laughs>
Okay, are we still here? Wow, all right. You know, that actually wasn't half bad. So, well, except you can't see the balloon now in the camera shot. Uh, well, sorry, it's there. It didn't fly away. Um, whew, my hand is killing me. I was, I had a hold of that thing, like, it wasn't going anywhere. So, any, oh God, so many bugs around. Um, so the balloon's filled, that's the hard part. Um, it's up, it's ready to go. Uh, confession, that helium tank is the same helium tank we used on the last flight over the Horizon 7. So it was only about half full, but I wasn't really sure. Um, so we kind of took a gamble, and I was getting real nervous towards the end there that it wasn't gonna fill up because the gas was really starting to creep out slowly. Um, but it filled, so. Whew. I, but I was getting the bump, 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 bump. I'll probably just bang the microphone. That probably didn't sound good on the broadcast. But yeah, the heart was getting the bump because uh, I wasn't sure we we're gonna have enough helium. But but we do. We're good. So payload lines attached, safety lines attached. Um, so now we're T minus 30. Perfect. What material? Uh, YouTube question. What materials do you use to seal the balloon? Zip ties, tape. What kind? Do you have documentation of the process. I don't have documentation yet, but. Uh, then in the off season this fall and winter, uh, I'm going to try to put more stuff on, on OverlookHorizon.com about our process and you know to try to help out other groups that, that may want to do it. Sorry, I'm sweating. Um, so I don't have any documentation on that, but what we use, so um, the balloon is always zip tied to the safety line at any time. So there's never a moment where, where we're holding it. I mean, we're holding it the whole time, but it, we're never relying on us holding it to keep it from flying away. So it's always zip tied to a safety line. So while it's filling, zip tied to the safety line. Once it's done filling, before I take off the the first zip tie on the safety line, I put in another zip tie around, you twist the balloon neck, put in another zip tie, include the safety line. So it's, that's in there as well. And then um, then you, then we fold over the, the neck. So it's in like a U shape. Um, and then we put two more zip ties on there as well. Um, and then after it's all zip tie, and those zip ties also, we have the payload, uh, after the first zip tie, we loop the payload string on, and the next two zip ties include the, uh, the, the payload lines. Um, so the, uh, um, what was I gonna say? So then after we zip tie it all up, then we use electrical tape uh, after we cut the zip ties, and the electrical tape is really just to make sure that the sharp ends of the zip tie don't poke the, the balloon. Uh, you could do without the electrical tape if you're if like a calm day like today. Probably don't probably don't need it because the balloon's not waving around like crazy. It's pretty kind of just sitting there. But uh, uh, in a windier day, you kind of want to have uh, that electrical tape so if the balloon kind of blows over, it doesn't catch one of the sharp edges of the zip tie. So. Um, so that's what we got. Um, all right, I got to get moving again because our next thing is T minus 30. So just a few minutes behind, but I'll catch up. So just wanted to give you a quick update, and uh, we're going to move on to get the payload ready. doing now this is 
is our backup Android app. I can't stand in the sun, you can't see it. I'm just getting the, uh, oh. I even have a radio I can talk to you so you know what's going on. How's that? There we go. Uh, so right, right now we're getting the, uh, the backup uh, cellular GPS with our special app. Uh, the cellular is automatically off um, during the uh, flight and then it resumes once it lands. So we're getting the backup system powered on here. And uh, once that's powered on, then we're going to move. Uh, right now the, uh, the flight computer is connected to the, the car for, uh, for power, so it's not draining the batteries. Um, you can hear the, the flight computer um, broadcasting in the background. Uh, so we're going to uh, we're gonna get, this, get this backup system up and running here. Okay, backup system's on. Let's just verify that it's actually working. Bingo. Backup system's working.
told you I'd bring it back. So, payload starting up. Have a good flight. Thank you, G Space. So, payload starting up. That beeping, that's just letting it, it's telling me that it's working on getting a GPS signal. We don't have one yet, but it's working on getting a GPS signal. Uh, so, when those tones stop, we'll be in good shape. GPS that didn't take long. Got a radio signal, we're good to go. So now let's see. Yeah, we're we're actually we're ahead of schedule here. Way ahead of schedule. GPS antenna attached to the top of the box here. So that's this little dangly bit. It's still got the double-sided tape. Right here, I can let's switch this. Nice and close. I can I can get on the regular microphone so you can hear me better. But uh, so we're gonna we're gonna get the GPS antenna mounted to the top of the box. Uh, just with a little bit of double-sided tape. This double-sided tape actually is fantastic. You wouldn't expect that it would do so well, but it sticks really well. There's no science. It's not really that scientific. Just uh, approximately cover the whole bottom here with one strip, and then the antenna goes on the outside over here. Just like that. Just press it down. Get it on there. There we go. Okay, so our GPS antenna is good. Now we'll get our. Let's see. Oh, we got an extra antenna. We don't need the extra. Uh, now let's see. I need. I need more cord to my microphone here, so I'm not tripping on it. So now we're gonna stick our. Kind of put it off the side of the table there for a second. Stick our radio antenna out of the bottom here like that make sure that nothing broke in the process see if we still got signal yep still looking good okay so now, now I'm doing my FAA due diligence. I'm going to call the Rochester Tower, so I'm going to walk away for a second. Alright, that part's done. Call 
called in. Let's see. stuff trying to make sure everything's working correctly Chester Tower. Okay, now I'm moving on to cameras. Okay, sorry if you're asking questions. I don't, uh, here we can switch to the, uh, let's go back to the main camera here. Oh, and you can't see what's going on. Well, you still can't see because I'm too close to the camera, but you can at least see me, see something. So, Payload cameras are coming on here. We're not. some trouble here. Not sure. Uh... Not sure what's going on here with that. Cameras didn't come on. Let's try again. It's not good, I don't hear cameras coming on. Balloon camera came on. That's not good. We've got a problem here with the cameras. I don't know what's happening. So I got the cameras to power on. Uh, it looks like maybe one of these battery terminals is bad. Or the 
battery's bad. We're gonna try to I try to fix this real quick. We got a we got a break in the ground the ground wire here. Don't know why or where. Because it looks like it's connected just fine. Okay, we're gonna have to be gentle here. I, oh, yeah, the next course. As soon as I say we gotta be gentle, I drop it. Um, there's a there's a break in the wire there, and uh, I, don't, I don't think there's anything I can do about it quickly. But I'm getting power at the moment. wire in here loose right at the connection here or something couldn't tell you why okay it's on I'm just gonna I'm not gonna touch it where are we at 750 okay yeah we got all that Okay. Well, we at least we we definitely have two cameras working. At least it appears that way. I wonder if that could be why uh, why one of the cameras failed on the last flight. Maybe it came loose. 
part way through. But uh, it's working now, so we're still okay. We just gotta hustle. Let's see, in my tape, I gotta disconnect here. Now I'd rather, uh, rather have a little, little extra time here. minutes We're looking good let's see let me make sure I didn't miss anything yeah just about yeah all right we're in, we're in good shape now bring the payload lines over it up. We got two two lines for redundancy. Number two and I hooked up. Okay. Oh my goodness! All right, what else do we gotta do? Yeah, that's the set. We're going to get ready to launch this thing here. Let me switch to the launch cameras. Okay. Here we are. Launch cameras. Let's see here. Alright, so this is how yeah, get the microphone here. I'm not gonna have to clip in. So this is how this is gonna work. Uh, I'm gonna obviously by myself, like I said, I'm gonna launch it. Uh, you're probably not gonna see exact you know, I don't have another cameraman to follow it, but as soon as I get it up, finish my post launch stuff, I'll come back, we'll try to watch it here. So two minutes here. We're coming in close. Sorry I haven't answered your questions, but I'll throw your questions in the comments. As soon as we launch, I'll get back to those questions. Looking good. We got nothing else. Nothing else to do other than launch. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut the cut the safety line and we're gonna go up.
seconds. Got me close. Looking good though. I don't see any reason why we can't launch here. So we're pretty much staying over here. Get the camera shot here. Four, three, two, one. Oh. Well, that was a little bit nerve-wracking. Let me. What's the modem sound? That's the that's the payload broadcaster. Oh, we're looking for signal here. Still got good signal. Can you see it on the map yet? Can't see it on the map yet. That's okay. We uh, get this timer out of here. We don't need the timer anymore. Timer, since we are we are in the air here now. That was uh, that was tight. Close call. All right, I need a second to get my heart rate down. <laughs> what, are we seeing it on the map yet? Here, let me let's switch over to the map. It's really hard to see on this screen here. So let's try to switch to the full screen map. All right, I'll get my regular microphone back on. Okay, so we are in the air. We launched on time. I can't believe that, especially given that, uh, especially given that I was by myself. I gotta get real close to the screen because I can't see. Oh yeah, looks like we got, looks like we got signal, and we're on the map. Oh man, yeah, my my heart rate is super high right now, so. I need to, uh, we gotta cool it here for a second. But let me uh, let me take a look at the map, and just verify that, let me verify that everything's okay here. I see, I, I got some comments, I see the comments here. I'll get back to them in just a second here. But let me, I can't really see the map that you guys can see. So you guys can see the map, but I'm just checking. Uh, let's see, yeah, 2,388 feet. see if how we're doing on uh, uh, I'm get I'm getting local broadcasts here they're updated yeah there you go so that's the one I got 3133 feet so we're flying and we're tracking all right let me get to your comments here let's see let me get back to it here on my phone whoo yeah sorry I don't mean to be screaming into the uh, into the microphone but that was that was intense. That was very intense. We only had just a few seconds to launch. Oh my goodness! All right, I see, Brandon uh, on YouTube. I see your question there. Um, hold on one second. I'm going to get all the questions up and running here on uh, on uh, everything. Oh, I can't. <laughs> I, the last one I see is Brian. That says, "Let's light this candle." I can't. Why can't I see the ones before it here? Hold on. Hold on. I'm getting to your comments. One moment, you see our nice lovely map there. Hopefully the map continues to update. I keep hearing broadcasts, I haven't checked it here. But uh, let me, uh, let's get to... Whew. Heart rate's still pretty high. Video, let's see, here we go, there's the live video. All right, let me see if I can see all the comments from before. All right, here we go. Let's see. What did we get here? Solo launch. Let's design a smartphone app for automated voice recognition checklist system. That would that would actually be pretty awesome. Um, let's see. It's going smoothly. Well, I, I don't know about that. We'll see. I jinxed you. Yeah, right. Brian, let's light this candle. She's lit. Don't mention candles. I use hydrogen for mine. <laughs> yeah, we don't want... We don't want that. I'm thinking about moving to hydrogen, but uh, obviously I can't. I wouldn't want to do hydrogen by myself. But uh, uh, let's see. Um, lift off. Very impressed. You were exactly on time by yourself. I know. I'm kind of not to toot my own horn there, but I'm kind of impressed. They think it's a bit of a miracle. 
Angelo, the map is updating. Awesome, fantastic, that's good. Becky, what do you use for tracking? So, so our radio broadcasting system, it's, uh, uh, hold on, let me turn this down. Our radio broadcasting system, that's the, uh, that's the modem sound that you've heard throughout the whole setup, and you probably still hear it a little bit. Um, it'll start to fade because we, we'll lose local signal from it. But we broadcast in a format called APRS, automatic, what is it, automatic packet reporting system. I can't see the payload anymore. Oh, we got a jet taking off from Canada Airport. <laughs> Hope you read the notum. Um, so we automatic packet reporting system, it's kind of a standardized format that we broadcast in. And what that allows us to do is there's receivers all over the country in APRS. It's actually all over the world. You can go to Europe and there's APRS, Australia, Asia, uh, you know, pretty much everywhere they have APRS. Uh, so if you broadcast in this standard format on the right frequency, some in Europe and Australia are different frequencies, but you broadcast uh, on the right frequency um, and in that format, then those receivers all around all around the world or they will uh, they will pick up that signal and they will uh, the map that you're seeing on the screen is the APRS map uh, that shows uh, that's the receivers basically report it to um, to that mapping service um, so you get that real-time map they use them APRS gets used for uh, for vehicle tracking uh, they get you it gets used for uh, um, well, mostly it's like vehicle tracking. Uh, I think there's like a messaging component to APRS too, but I don't really know anything about that. But uh, but we use that, our computer on board broadcasts in that format so that um, so that it can get picked up and we don't have to be, we don't have to physically receive the signal, although it's nice. Most of the time, the signal that we're receiving is used for launching, so we know it's working correctly because you have to get to, you gotta get over like the tree line and the building so that those receivers, you got line of sight to those receivers because they're usually, like I think the closest one to here is way up in Rochester. So, you know, we're talking like 45 miles away or something is the closest one. But when it gets up to altitude, uh, we've had receivers pick it up from as far as 250 miles away. Um, so, so it can get picked up pretty far. Um, so we use that and then we use the map which we can track on our phone and um, you know obviously you can do it on the computer there you see the little web address here uh, at the bottom of the screen overlookhorizon.com slash map you can track it to yourself if you want to follow along and see how it's see how it's going you want to see the altitude it's at um, if you click on the balloon the little balloon icon when you're on the map if you click on it you'll get that little speech bubble there let's see which way uh, yeah right here the little speech bubble that you see there and that'll give you the details it'll show you um, the current altitude uh, it'll show you the temperature inside and outside the package show you the computer temperature and it'll show you our battery voltages um, and really I mean you might not care about any of that but but we do I want to know the batteries are performing well it tells me how many satellites the GPS is locked on to so um, so yeah it's a uh, uh, it's standardized format so let's see what I got another question on YouTube um, total newbie to this what does it take to launch a weather balloon FAA approval anything else um, it's surprisingly it you can actually launch a weather balloon in the United States without FAA approval um, there are um, there's what's called exempt flights and our flights are actually exempt flights which basically an exempt flight means that it's small enough and lightweight enough that uh, the FAA um, doesn't govern them they're on um, unrestricted and you know unrestricted in the sense that you don't have to get clearance you don't have to file with the FAA so uh, you know you got to make sure if you go to overlookhorizon.com slash safety you can see our safety procedures and what we do and what's required by law in the United States for launching a weather balloon but generally if you keep it small and lightweight you know we're talking like under four pounds you got to use lightweight string that can be broken by 50 pounds of force um, and you know it's got to be small lightweight usually like sty ours is a styrofoam payload package um, you know that ensures that it's it's safe to operate in the airspace um, if you go into non-exempt flights or heavier flights then you do have to get FAA uh, or you ha well, you don't have to get clearance but you have to file an FAA notification telling them hey this is what we're doing now we actually operate exempt flights and we're lightweight 
but we follow the heavyweight non-exempt procedures. And really it's just an extra bit of safety that we can do. I mean, it only takes a few minutes. I mean, you saw, I don't know, if, if you saw me call the FAA at T minus 15 minutes, uh, you know, that that's not required, but I work with the FAA directly ahead of time, like weeks ahead of time, usually let them know what's happening, what's going on. And they, you know, they very much appreciate those notifications, even if you're not required to do them. Uh, Cause it just lets them know what's in their airspace and they can plan around it. They can route traffic around it if they need to, or just advise pilots that, that it's nearby. Um, so just to be extra safe. So no, you don't need FAA clearance, but I definitely recommend, even though it's not required, notifying the FAA. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. It takes like 10 minutes. To, so I, like uh, about midnight this, this morning, I sent my formal notification. It goes to like seven or eight different people um, at the FAA. Usually if you start at your local uh, flight standards district office for the FAA, they can tell you where to uh, or who to contact. Um, but we we file those that notific that formal notification, and then they came back and they said they said, "Hey, great, thanks for the notification." And they said, "Would you mind also giving us a call 15 minutes before you launch, so that we know that that's uh, that's happening?" And that's what we did at T minus 15. I called them up, said, "Hey, we're launching," and uh, that's. Uh, that, that was that. It, was, it took two minutes and it's a piece of cake. You add it to the checklist so you don't forget and it's nice and easy. So, uh, Let's see, Brandon, how long are flights? When do you begin recovery? So flights are usually, they can be anywhere from, like smaller balloons can be hour and a half. Uh, larger balloons can be three or four hours. Uh, today's flight's two hours and 45 minutes. Um, should be, I mean, give or take 15 minutes. Could be two and a half, could be three should be somewhere in that range. Um, that's what we're that's what we're expecting today. So, um, and when do you begin recovery? I mean, usually we begin recovery. I mean, it's based on the flight pattern. So, um, let's see. I just want to check. I'm checking the map here again. Yep, 10, 11. We're doing good on tracking. So everything's still still on track. My heart rate's <laughs> my heart rate's coming down. That's good. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. Um, so, hi. Uh, where can I see on the map where the balloon is now? Um, so on the map that you're seeing, there's a little balloon icon there uh, that shows it. But if you go to, over, there's a web address right here, overlookhorizon.com slash map. It should take you right to the APRS website and center it right on our balloon. Um, and then you just, you can click on the balloon icon to see the details of it. Um, so anyways, uh, going back to Brandon's question on YouTube, uh, when do you begin recovery? Uh, it's based on when, where the landing is going to be. So today's landing is really, should be really close. Uh, here, let's take a look at, in case you missed it from earlier, let's take a look at the predicted flight path here real quick. Uh, so this is our prediction for the flight path today. This is what we're expecting to see. Um, so this is actually a really close downrange landing. We're talking less than 10 miles. Um, you, this is pretty rare. Um, it's hard to find these days that it goes this close, but they're very interesting to me. So I like to keep them. Uh, I, I love to launch balloons on days like this. Um, but uh, a lot of times the landing will be 90 miles away, or if you pick a really windy day, it could be 150 miles away. Um, you can. There's a lot of people. Uh, I know there's a guy named Mike here that follows along. Um, I'm not even, Mike H. I'm not even going to try to pronounce your last name because I know I'll butcher it. Um, so sorry, Mike. But uh, Mike, uh, I believe it's Mike uh, that does. He does uh, around the world flights. So they're long duration flights um, using a. Uh, um, I think he uses super pressure balloons. I'm not sure what kind of balloons he uses, but so, but you can do long duration flights uh, that go all the way around the world. And there's some people that launch those flights and they go around the world nine, 10, 15 times and they get signal the entire time. Um, so it's pretty cool, but our flights are usually two, three, four hours in a rare event. But today's flight should be between two and a half and three hours should hopefully we're predicting it to follow this flight pattern here that you see on the screen. Um, this is just one possibility from the flight predictions that we run. We run thousands of flight predictions um, before we launch. So this is just one so that you can kind of see the, uh, the flight pattern. But when we kind of aggregate all the predictions that we run, 
we get this cool little heat map that uh, this is our landing zone heat map. So, so the landing zone can really vary. It's usually when we file our NOTAMs, we file it with a 20 mile radius um, because there's some uncertainty there. Most of the time, it's usually it's usually only five to ten miles off of um, the center of this this uh, heat map here. Um, so obviously we try to get as close, or you know, we'd love it to land where we predict it. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, the last flight wasn't even close on the prediction. I don't know what happened there. Um, but uh, that was uh, um, that was odd from the last flight, but we had some strange winds then. A lot of times when you get these strange wind patterns, um, like the ones we're seeing today, um, the predictions become less accurate just because there's so many changes in the wind that you know it could change just slightly before predicted or go a little bit farther than predicted um, you know that so sometimes they're not accurate also the balloon filling procedure is uh, I mean it's relatively accurate in as to how much pull there is on the balloon but there is room for error particularly on windy days today's not that windy so I feel pretty good about that we had it inflated I haven't checked the ascent rate yet so we'll have to check and see uh, see what we got for an ascent rate because um, we're looking for uh, uh, today we're expecting to go 850 feet per minute uh, it's actually a little higher than that I think it's like 856 or something like that that's our goal is 856 feet per minute which is 4.35 meters per second if you're a, a metric guy or girl um, so that's what we shoot for, and we have that counterweight, which is the milk jug. I don't know if you can still see it. Uh, the milk jug that's at the back of the tarp there, that's filled with water to a very specific weight. Um, and that, once that lifts off the ground, then we know that the balloon is pulling uh, at least that much weight from the, from the jug. And that, that uh, milk jug or water jug is filled to a certain weight, the weight that we want or the amount of pull that we want from the balloon. So that's how we know when the balloon is filled. Um, calm days like this works out great. Um, windy days, a little bit harder because the wind can actually blow across the balloon and create aerodynamic lift. So sometimes the balloon will lift up um, from the wind and you think it's full. That happened on Overlook Horizon 5. It was very windy. We thought it was full. We capped it off and sealed it and it started going and turns out we didn't have it filled enough. And that, that was a very slow ascent rate. It was like 300 feet per minute or something like that. And it took our two and a half hour flight and turned it into a four hour flight. And so the landing was way off what we expected. So, so that kind of thing can definitely happen. So uh, let's see, Brandon, that's very cool. Thanks for sharing. I'll be following your broadcast from now on. So, so yeah, definitely uh, follow along if you are, uh, if you're around today, so I'll let you know that what the plan is for... Uh, I'm trying to get my Facebook comments back up here because um, I feel like I'm neglecting the Facebook comments. Uh, uh, oh, I don't see any. don't see any comments. So, um, Anyway, so uh, the plan for today... So immediately, I got, I just got to kind of relax. I didn't even get to watch the balloon. I don't even know where it is. I think it's like in the sunlight, so I'm not going to be able to see it because the sun's like right directly where the, the balloon is traveling. Um, so I didn't even get to watch the balloon, but my heart rate was going so much because we, we came right down to the wire on launch. It was like clip everything together, lift the balloon up. I grabbed the box for like four seconds and then I just let it go. Uh, so that was kind of unnerving. Like I usually like to have the box in my hands for a good minute or so where I can just be like, ah, okay, is everything right? Is everything good? And then we can let it go. But that didn't happen today, but I was feel, feeling pretty good about it so far. Uh, we're flying and uh, we're broadcasting, which is good. We're, uh, yeah, so that we're, I'm still getting local signal here, which is great, which I may, the nice thing about this, this flight pattern we have is I may get local signal for a long time uh, because it's going to come right back over the top of us. So so the plan for today is I'm going to hang out here. I'm going to get things packed up, kind of take my time, get everything organized and back together, see if I can get my heart rate down a little further because it's still going still going a little bit. But uh, it's, it's always very nerve-wracking because, you know, the thing, it's the love-hate relationship that I have with high-altitude ballooning. you got to do so much planning and you got to do so many checks and make sure things are working and once you let it go there's no undo it's gone you can't bring it back you gotta be confident that it's gonna work 
and uh, you know especially today I'm you know my confidence level is a little bit on the lower side just because the last flight stopped broadcasting part way through part way through the flight so um, so far right now we're looking pretty good um, you know we just got another broadcast there uh, we're at 17,000 feet we're going 10 miles an hour so a nice nice leisurely pace um, so 17,000 feet we are up and um, we're, we're we're things are good so far so you know I got to we got to wait and see we didn't start seeing problems on the last flight until an hour in so uh, you know 11 o'clock is when we started seeing problems it was also a lot colder in the upper atmosphere on the last flight which may have affected the, uh, the electrical and broadcasting issues last time around so this time around it's pretty warm out on the ground level which was nice and I also had the payload in the Sun it kind of warmed up the internal uh, package quite a bit and uh, hopefully that will stay um, it'll stay warmer longer on the inside of the payload and help uh, help performance uh, on those batteries so we're still I mean it's 30 degrees outside the package where it is right now and it is uh, 90 degrees inside the package so it's still toasty inside the package which is which is great um, so anyways we're gonna keep an eye on this and see uh, hopefully everything goes well with this flight today um, you know I really hate uh, I hate this part especially uh, especially knowing that the last flight had issues um, here I guess you don't have to stare at my flight prediction here let's go back to the actual map itself so you can so you can see what I'm seeing on the map because I keep looking at my phone just checking the map here um, just making sure things are working well uh, 18,000 feet now um, yeah so it's it's going well we're starting to make that upward turn now that we saw in the predictions um, so oh, there you go it just came up for you guys so um, so yeah we're starting to make that upward turn and uh, it's looking good so so I started saying uh, so I'm all over the place but the plan for today hang out I'm gonna get things packed up here probably end the broadcast here uh, shortly um, if I don't see any more questions come in but um, we will uh, we'll be tracking it and then pro I'll probably do a mid-flight update um, somewhere close to balloon burst usually is what I'll try for um, and then we'll do a recovery update uh, later on uh, it's all dependent on mobile data but this is staying pretty close so I'm pretty uh, pretty confident that we can uh, we'll be able to broadcast later it may there's a possibility if you're watching on YouTube there is a possibility that our later broadcast I'd say it's very likely actually our later broadcast may be Facebook only um, so if you're not already following our Facebook page um, definitely go over and head over to the Facebook page and uh, and give our give our Facebook page a like um, so that you can uh, here I'll put it up on the screen um, give our Facebook page a like because the, the later broadcasts will likely be Facebook only um, just because it gets harder I mean it's it's easy to do both Facebook and YouTube at the same time at the launch site because I get set up ahead of time I got the computer up I get the monitors I got my modem I got everything you know everything's running here um, but once I put it all in the car and we get we get mobile uh, it's a little harder to do both at the same time so likely the next two broadcasts will be uh, will be Facebook only so um, so make sure you're following our Facebook page there to uh, to get those those updates as well we'll probably look in uh, let's see we had a 10 o'clock launch um, I don't know what that sound was something just made a sound oh it's my ground camera here um, One of the screenshots looks like predict. Oh, what's up? Yeah, okay. So a YouTube question here. What software do you use for path predictions? Um, yeah, and then uh, some. I can't read the name here. I got glare on my screen. But then the next person said one of the screenshots looks like predict.habhub.org. Yes, definitely. The one flight path is uh, is the Habhub prediction tool. Um, so Habhub is uh, is uh, this one right here. So that's a Habhub prediction. Um, and if you go to over, overlookhorizon.com in the uh, top toolbar there, or the navigation menu, there's an option that says utilities and then links to all these prediction tools are in there as well. But we use two main predictors. Um, we use HabHub, that gives us these single predictions so we can see the, uh, the approximate flight path. This is usually the most 
accurate. Um, this is, I, I've never seen it be, I, you know, I've seen it be off by the distance, but the actual flight pattern, like the shape of it, is almost always right on from half up. Um, so this one's great to get the flight pattern, and it's usually pretty good on the, the landing zone as well. Um, but the other one we use is called Astra Planner, and that's this one here. That's the one that gives us this heat map. And the, the nice thing about Astra Planner is you can, uh, so Hab Hub only runs, runs one prediction at a time, uh, but Astra Planner, you can tell it to run 20 or 50 or 100 or 200, or we usually run two, 200 or 300, and that gives us this nice clear picture of all the possibilities of where this flight might land, which is how we get this nice little um, uh, heat map here. So we, that Astra Planner, um, it, sometimes it's not as accurate, um, so I don't completely rely on that, and that's why I use both. Um, but it's usually pretty nice for, uh, uh, for the heat maps, and then when you run both predictions and they come up with roughly the same area, then you feel pretty good on, on what the flight path is gonna be for the day. So, um, so that's what we use for predictions here. Um, so flight's still, Oh man, flight's still doing well. My heart rate's still elevated. <laughs> oh man, I got. I want to put my sunglasses on so badly, but if I put my sunglasses on, then I can't see the screen. Um, I should put my hat on so I don't get a sunburn. Um, yeah, so I'm just pulling up the map here so we can see that one more time. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry, I'm neglecting the Facebook people. Any more comments? What time are you expecting balloon burst? Uh, 126 minutes we're expecting balloon burst so what uh, that would be uh, 1206 uh, so right around noon right about lunchtime that's when we're expecting balloon burst um, you know it could be plus or minus a few minutes so probably I would uh, you know check the Facebook page uh, right around like 1130 or so and that's probably when the next broadcast will be and then we're expecting landing at uh, about 1245 today so so that's what we're that's what uh, we're looking like for today's flight. Um, so, oh man, what a morning already! It's a little bit stressful getting uh, getting it up and running on my own, but we did it. It's there. It's up. Uh, it seems to be. Yeah, seems it's still broadcasting and doing well. So we're at 20, 21,600 feet. Uh, let's see, I'm, I'm still receiving local signal here on the ground, which is kind of cool. Um, and it's nice because I don't have to move and go anywhere. So uh, I gotta, I've been talking forever though. I gotta, I gotta get a drink. So excuse me for one moment while I take a drink in front of all of you. This is not a Gatorade commercial, but I am gonna take a drink of my Gatorade. But take note, Gatorade, if you want to sponsor us, we could probably work something out. Um, so, let's see. Uh, yeah, I don't see any more, don't see any more YouTube comments. Uh, my phone is about a thousand degrees in the sun, as, as am I. Um, will you have RF and be beaconing from the Chase vehicle? Um, yeah, well, the Chase vehicle, uh, we're not going to... Uh, I don't have any radio transmitting on the Chase vehicle. Uh, I do have that capability, but I just didn't bring it today. So Chase vehicle will not be broadcasting radio signals, but if you use Hab Hub's tracker, if you're familiar with that, um, it's a little more uh, complicated for the average user to use, but I think that question was from Mike. Uh, you know, So Mike probably knows uh, Hab, the Hab Hub tracker. I will be using Hab Hub's um, Chase vehicle app, which will upload our chase vehicle location during the broadcast. And that just comes up on the Hab Hub tracker as KD2KPZ underscore chase. Um, so, so you can definitely take a look at the, uh, um, you take a look at the, the Hab Hub map and you can see our chase vehicle. And the later broadcast that I do, will also, I'll show the, the chase vehicle and where we are in relation to the balloon later on. So. Uh, question on YouTube from Brandon. Is this just a hobby for you, or are you associated with a school research facility? No, so uh, mostly a hobby. Um, so I started last year. Um, so we've done eight flights now. I started last year, and it was really just a, a hobby, just kind of a let's see if we can do this kind of thing. 
And uh, we did four flights last year. And by the end of the summer, without even trying, I, we had tons of people that were interested and um, sending us messages and how do you do this and how do you do that. Sorry, I got a cement mixer right behind me. I don't know what he's doing, but you might hear that in the broadcast. But um, So anyways, uh, by the end of the summer, I, we had tons of people that were just interested in following along. And I mean, it, it produces some really amazing photos and videos that are pretty awesome and that's my favorite part is just well i don't know i like the whole thing but the photos and videos it gets are pretty awesome hopefully we get them today we did have that we did have trouble with the one camera which i switched it to be the balloon facing camera it was one of the side cameras but i'd rather the side cameras work and sacrifice the balloon camera so it was working when i closed up the payload we'll see if the balloon camera lasts for the entire flight i'm not sure if it will because there's a loose wire in there somewhere i guess i gotta fix that for next time um but anyway so it started as just a hobby and then uh in the off season the fall and winter this year um kind of ramped it up and gave it a more polished look here with our, our you know we did live broadcast for our launch last year but you know i wanted to uh you know wanted to start providing some resources for for students for educators uh, or people that just want to do it themselves because uh, a lot of people don't know don't know how to do it they don't know what's involved in it and we have unfortunately we've seen some people do it wrong or i mean wrong is a wrong is probably not the word the right word to use but um we've seen people not follow some of the faa guidelines particularly with um weight and ropes and some of the restrictions that that you have to follow so you know we wanted to just contribute to uh to the environment and if we can help educate people that are going to do it themselves or even uh, in the last launch we had the boy scouts from canadago here checking it out they get to see you know what this is all about you know, the technology that goes into it um you know so we wanted to just share some of that stuff as to what what goes into a lot of this and how it uh, how it works how it operates because there's a lot of you know there's there's physical science as far as the environment and the measurements that we get and the wind predictions and all that kind of stuff there's also um there's computer science with the actual computer tracking system and the code we write there's ham radios with the aprs broadcasting that we do um so there's all kinds of science there's math involved you know with uh, trying to calculate the ascent rate and descent rate to make sure your parachute is is uh, the correct size for the weight of your payload. Uh, so there's a lot that goes into it, and uh, you know, for students, I feel like it's a, a great education tool um, for them to get out of the classroom and see something in real life. And you know, we we only do four or five flights a year, um, but the the National Weather Service they launched uh, from like i think it's 80 80 weather stations across the country they launch minimum two per day every single day sometimes three per day um, so you got seventy-five thousand balloons going up throughout the year from the national weather service so this kind of stuff is happening all day every day across the country and that, that's just in the u.s i mean there are weather services and uh, across the world that are doing weather balloons so um so it's interesting to see, um, you know, personally for me, I love the photos and videos and I love the technology aspect of it. I'm a software engineer by trade. So, uh, you know, I love the technology aspect and the flight computer. We built our own flight computer. Um, you can buy pre-packaged um, flight computers, either the Eagle flight computer or Pie in the Sky or Habduino. Um, Maybe those are the three that I know, but you can buy pre-packaged ones that you can just basically plug in and launch. Um, but you know, I wanted to build our own, so we have our own custom uh, flight computer that we built uh, that launches on this. Uh, you know, the upside to that is you get a lot of uh, a lot of experience with uh, with the platform. Downside, you make a lot of mistakes with it. <laughs> so, um, but it's that's half the battle. I mean, what what fun would it be if everything just worked perfectly all the time, right? So. So anyways, now, you know, I can say that now much more easily now that my heart rate is almost at a normal level and the balloon is up. And uh, let's see, I don't know how we, uh, let's see how we're doing on uh, on our tracking map here. Uh, I also, well, let me, let me look at comments first, see if there were any other comments. Uh, do you have sponsors or is this all self-funded? Uh, it's pretty much self-funded. Um, we've had a couple of little minor sponsorships. Um, they contribute a little bit 
um, but it's mostly self-funded. Um, so, yeah, we've looked for, we've looked to try to get sponsorships, but you know, it's a hard thing to get sponsorships for. I mean, it's hard to go to uh, go to somebody and say, uh, uh, you know, look at this high altitude weather balloon that we're doing. Isn't this cool? And don't you want to sponsor it? Um, yeah, you know, a lot of people just give you funny looks if you do that. So. Uh, we've loosely tried to get sponsorships, but not too much. Um, you know, we do it self-funded. Um, you know, we make uh, we make a little bit of money off the uh, the YouTube channel uh, and the live broadcast, but it's not much. I mean, we're talking like a few dollars a year. You know, there's the the budget for this for the year is a couple thousand dollars. Um, you know, we the money that we bring in from YouTube, and we've got T-shirts that we sell and uh, stickers that we sell. Um, you know, the money we bring in from that stuff is nowhere near what we, uh, <laughs> what we put out for, for the budget. So, um, so anyways, that's, uh, it's all just self-funded right now. Um, so let's see. Uh, so that was Brian on Facebook. Um, so yeah, I think I got everybody's questions here and I'm just gonna, uh, I want to check out the map here. Just see if we're still... See if we're still going strong. Still see the balloon up. 1035. Okay, so that was right now. So we're at 28,500 feet. Um, we are almost directly east of us, way up there. Uh, I'm not going to be able to see it. The sun's like right in my, my visual path there. Um, so, yeah, it seemed things seem to be going well so far. So far, so good. So. I think I'm going to wrap this up here. My voice, my throat's starting to get dry from talking so much. Heart rate's still elevated. I think I got to just sit down for a second and breathe. Um, but I'm, I'm very excited that uh, it seemed to go up, uh, seemed to go up without any issues. Um, you know, we had the one camera issue, so we'll find out when it comes down whether that camera worked or not. Um, so a loose wire on the balloon facing camera that might fail in the middle of flight. I would I would probably bet on it failing at some point um, But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if it uh, if it sticks around um, And uh, what happens with it, but uh, the two hopefully the two side facing cameras they were they powered on normally um, They should be okay for this flight and most importantly is the radio tracking system because we can't get it back if we don't know where it lands uh, well, the radio tracking system seems to be performing well so far. We're only about 34 minutes into our flight, so we'll find we got another two hours to go. Um, so we'll find out soon um, where uh, or what's going to happen with the radio tracking system. So, anyways, uh, it looks like they're about to mow the lawn here. <laughs> so I gotta get loud. So I better back up. Um, so anyway, Brandon, thanks. Talk to you soon. All right, yeah, Brandon, thanks for watching. Thanks to everybody for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Facebook, uh, appreciate you following along today. So go to overlookhorizon.com slash map. You can follow along with a flight. About 11.30 a.m. Eastern time, look for another update broadcast. And then uh, right around 12.45, it probably be 1 o'clock or so. Uh, 12.45, 1 o'clock is when it'll land, and we'll have another broadcast somewhere around there as well. Uh, likely be Facebook only. So go check out the Facebook page. Hit that like button on our Facebook page so you get notified um, when we're live. So, so anyways, uh, that's what we're looking at today. I'm going to wrap this up here. Uh, appreciate everybody for watching this midday launch. I can't believe we launched on time. I can't believe I launched on time, given that I was all by myself. Um, but it worked. So, uh, so I'm happy about that. And uh, just about everything went off without a hitch just that one camera issue which we'll we'll fix for next time but not much i could do about it today so so anyways stick around and uh we'll find out what happens uh with this flight for later so thanks everybody for watching and we'll talk to you all soon